Okay, this is where we're going to have a little bit of fun, talk about how you can take all these chords that we've learned in here and create some licks and fills and do some fun things with them. Uh, first and foremost, the most important tool that you have at your disposal is you don't have to play the chord in the same inversion every time. Meaning, so we learn it here, right? This is an F chord. Well, you can play it here, or here, or here. You can do the same thing up an octave. You know, so move around, change the chord inversions, play the same notes but in different configurations. That's one thing. But then, uh, here's just a few things. A lot of arpeggiating going on in this song. So when they're playing along, you'll see things like this. See what I'm doing there? I'm taking the individual notes in the chord. That's a really popular one, so watch what I'm doing there. And you can do that on any chord. So all it is is taking the lowest note, one, two, three, up. Another thing that's going on a lot is they're taking, they're doing what I would call modulation uh, chords. So like we're in the key of F here, there's one flat. So at any given time, I know there's a lot of accidentals throughout this. But if you want to move from, say, F and A to C and A, like so, and you need to choose what to play here, remember that there's a B flat in there, so. That's another thing. You can take any chord and start doing a little bit of what I call toggle action. Where you take the top half of the chord and bounce back and forth between it and the thumb so you can be So see how you can do all kinds of movement, just toggles and arpeggios within, so you don't even have to choose different notes, you just create rhythmic excitement within the same notes you're already playing. Change the inversion of the chord, same notes, different configuration, jump an octave or two or come around. Um, 
whenever they go to a G minor chord, I always hear somebody go, which is G and B flat, A and C, B flat and D. So just when you move around, just keep that left hand solid. You want that dum 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 da dum. That is the glue that holds this together. And your right hand. And by the way, if you're not an advanced player, what I would do is I would start by adding your rhythmic riffs right where your hand already was. I would not try to change the inversion of the chord right away, but so that you're comfortable. I would be down here and just start building the process from doing things like this. So you have your little signature lick that you already learned. But in between there you can use the toggle, you can use the that maneuver. You can do some arpeggiating but without having to move your hand around. Once you get real comfortable with what these chords are, then you can start changing the inversion and moving yourself up and down the keyboard a little bit. Um, then another thing that you might want to look at this is a fun thing at the end so when you get to your um, go to your F. Now you were doing this. You were going You can take the same pattern and create what I would call a little triplet run. You play F followed by your thumb on F pinky up an octave, so F, F, F. Slow, it looks like that. fast it comes off like this Oops. just kind of a fun way to end it things like that um, You can do kind of a little run down uh, B flat. So here's one little thing that I tend to do a lot of. Find um, a D and an A flat. So put your put your thumb on an F. Find an A flat with your index finger. Find a D with your pinky. OK, 
Okay, so what you're doing is you're playing A flat and D. Then you're coming down on B flat with your middle finger. Then back to A flat. Thumb down on F. Then you come back around and it's F and D flat. Or, and then F and C, F and B flat. And then you just repeat it down an octave and down an octave. So when you were coming in, it'd be to replace this whole thing. So you'd be like so. And any combination as you come up, essentially what you're doing here, you start out on an F major 7 arpeggio, F, A, C, E, and then at some point you shift to a G major 7, G, B, D, A, F sharp, and then A if you can fit it in there. So you can just... So those are some other ideas for you, but really what they're doing an awful lot of throughout this whole song is just taking the chord that's already being played and ornamenting it a little bit, just giving it a little frill. That's why these little things are so important when you, so much, so often what you can do for it is simply to play a chord, but just take the third of the chord or even the fifth or whatever and do one of those trills. You go a half step below and just... That sounds different than just going... Late at night When it's dark and cold I reach out It's just about taking the chords that are already there, which is why I taught it in a simplified fashion, because I want those chords to get under your fingers. Because until you can get, there's, you don't have a prayer of improvising on this until, you're, until the chord structure is under your hands. So in the meantime, it sounds just fine without a whole lot of stuff. You still have the most, you still have the most signature licks from the song in there. Um, but you have something to work from. 
And then when these chords really, really set into you, then just start. So like I say, there are, there are arpeggiated things like this. All the arpeggios don't always have to have like really fast 16th note things like it can just be very simple late at night when it's dark and cold I reach out then the toggle action whether it's one note to one note like It could be a chord to one note. And uh, play around with the inversions of the chords as you, once you feel comfortable. So. That's kind of what they're doing all through the thing and there's no particular rhyme or reason because all through the song they're both just kind of Just to give you some examples of different things you can do, you want to work them from the chord. You want to start with the simplified rhythm pattern I gave you. Learn those chords. Get your fingers comfortable with the notes in those chords. And then start working from there out. And start simple and start where the chord is already being voiced. In other words, don't try to do all and don't try to move your hand all over the keyboard right away just start here taking the notes that were already there that you were already playing but changing that rhythmically a little bit just doing some basic arpeggiating or toggling but not really moving my hand and not getting crazy just
course, making room for the signature lick whenever it comes along. So, um, I hope that that helps and doesn't confuse you more. Um, it's just the best idea I had to teach this in an authentic way because, as I said, maybe for somebody else it's possible to teach a complete transcription of that song, uh, but I really didn't see a way to pull it off and have it be anything other than a big, confusing, jumbled mess. So I wanted to teach you where it was going, approximate the overall feel of the song, which is what we've done, and make sure that we get some of the most signature things in. You, you have learned this is a transcription of the beginning. You know, and then some of these great little things like... That's exactly what's going on. So it's not that there aren't parts of this that aren't completely transcribed. I tried to get the most signature things, but there's just too much going on with two different piano players, and the whole thing is just a big jazzy blues improv. And so the best thing I can do is teach you these chords and give you some ideas on how to take them and create your own little lick patterns. And then do them go where your heart tells you to go in any given moment because that's what will make it sound authentic. This is the kind of song that even if it could be written out every single note that both guys are playing and you could just follow one all the way along, I guarantee you it wouldn't sound right to you if you played it note for note because what makes it sound authentic is the fact that they're kind of going where the music takes them and it's just the simple little things that you do on a chord. You know you're going to play an F chord, but this time you do this, but the next time you do this. And there is no right way or wrong way to do it. What makes it sound right is that in any given moment you're still playing an F chord, but you just never know how you're going to voice it. You never know what you're going to do with it, you're just going to do something with it and it's going to be dictated by the moment. Bam! Right out of nowhere. And that's what will make this song sound right. Um, so I hope that this has helped helped you understand uh, where to go and how very, very simple variations on things uh, can make a big difference. Because none of the things that he or Ray Charles are doing are really that complicated. They're just simple variations on the chords that they're playing almost all the way through the song. So... Um, Hope you've enjoyed this. In the next section, I'm just going to do a quick wrap-up, and then uh, we're going to be out of here. So I'll see you there.